Hello, acute angels. This is Teacher Anna, and welcome to another Matinic episode. Today, we will learn about the distance formula. Are you ready? At the end of this lesson, you are expected to apply the distance formula to prove some geometric properties. So, what is distance? Distance is a numerical measurement of how far apart objects or points are. In physics or everyday usage, distance may refer to a physical length or an estimation based on other criteria. For example, two countries over. In most cases, distance from A to B is interchangeable with distance from B to A. In mathematics, a distance function or metric is a generalization of the concept of physical distance, a way of describing what it means for elements of some space to be close to or far away from each other. Let's talk about the distance between two points. The distance between two points is always non-negative. Of course, there is no negative measurement. It is positive when the two points are different, and zero if the points are the same. If P and Q are two points, then the distance from P to Q is the same as the distance from Q to P. Therefore, we can say that PQ is equal to QP. Let's consider two points that are aligned horizontally or vertically on the coordinate plane. The horizontal distance between these points is the absolute value of the difference of their x-coordinates. Likewise, the vertical distance between these points is the absolute value of the difference of their y-coordinates. Again, if we talk about the horizontal distance, we get the absolute value of the difference of their x-coordinates. But if it is a vertical distance, we get the absolute value of the difference of their y coordinates. For example, we have line PQ, wherein point P lies at 3, 0 and Q lies at 6, 0. Let's say point P have the coordinates x sub 1 and y sub 1, while point Q have the coordinates x sub 2 and y sub 2. Our formula would be D is equal to the absolute value of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 because the given figure is in horizontal form. The value of x sub 2 is 6 and the value of x sub 1 is 3. So we have D is equal to the absolute value of 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. Therefore, we have the absolute value of 3. And the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. Therefore, the distance between point P and point Q is 3. But if the given figure is in vertical form, our formula would be D is equal to the absolute value of y sub 2 minus y sub 1. But what if the given figure is in slanting position? What will we do? Well, we can still solve for it using the distance formula. The distance between two points, whether or not they are aligned horizontally or vertically, can be determined using the distance formula. Consider the points P and Q whose coordinates are x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2 and y sub 2 respectively. The distance d between these points can be determined using the distance formula. d is equal to the square root of the quantity x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus the quantity y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Aside from the distance formula, 
Another formula that we need to be familiar is the midpoint formula. If L with coordinates x sub 1 and y sub 1 and N with coordinates x sub 2 and y sub 2 are the endpoints of a segment and M is the midpoint. Then, the coordinates of the midpoint is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over 2 for the x coordinate. And for y coordinate, we have y sub 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. Let us now apply what we have learned to the following examples. Example number 1. How far is the point 6, 8 from the origin? Again, how far is the point 6, 8 from the origin? The coordinates of the origin is 0, 0. And since it talks about how far the two points are, it talks about distance. So we are going to use the distance formula. Let's say that the origin has the coordinates x sub 1 and y sub 1. And for 6, 8, we have x sub 2 and y sub 2. Our next step then is to substitute the following to the given formula. The value of x sub 2 is 6 and the value of x sub 1 is 0. Then we have y sub 2 which is equal to 8 and the value of y sub 1 is 0. 6 minus 0 is equal to 6 and 8 minus 0 is equal to 8. Then we have 6 squared, which is equal to 6 times 6, which is again equal to 36. And for 8 squared, we have 8 times 8, which is equal to 64. Then we have 36 plus 64, which is equal to 100. Then the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So the distance of point 6, 8 from the origin is 10 units. Example number 2. Find the radius of a circle with a diameter whose endpoints are negative 7 and 1 and 1 and 3. Our given points are negative 7 and 1 and 1 and 3. And since the radius is equal to half the measurement of the diameter, we can just identify the measurement of the diameter using the distance formula. Then afterwards, we will divide it to 2 to know the measurement of the radius. So let's say that point negative 7 and 1 is the x sub 1 and y sub 1. And for 1 and 3, we have x sub 2 and y sub 2. So substituting the given data to the formula, we have the value of x sub 2 is 1 and the value of x sub 1 is negative 7 and the value of y sub 2 is 3 and the value of y sub 1 is 1. Then we have 1 plus 7 then 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. 1 plus 7 is equal to 8 and 2 squared is equal to 4. Then we have 8 squared which is equal to 8 times 8 which is equal to 64. So we have square root of 64 plus 4 which is equal to square root of 68. And since 68 is not a perfect square, we will reduce it. So we have 4 multiplied to 17. 4 is a perfect squared, so we have 2 square root of 17. So that is the measurement of the diameter. Now let us proceed in identifying the measurement of the radius. So our formula is radius is equal to half the measurement of the diameter. So we have radius equals 1 over 2 multiplied to the measurement of the diameter which is 2 square root of 17. 
one half multiplied to two is equal to one or we simply canceled it out so we have the measurement of the radius now the measurement of the radius is square root of 17 units and for our last example find the center of a circle whose diameter has endpoints negative 1 and negative 5 and 5 and negative 1 again our given points are negative 1 and negative 5 and we have 5 and negative 1. And since the problem talks about the center, it looks on the midpoint. So we're going to use the midpoint formula. Let's say that negative 1 and negative 5 has the coordinates x sub 1 and y sub 1. And the other point has x sub 2 and y sub 2 as coordinate. Substituting the given values to the given formula, we have x sub 1 which is equal to negative 1 and for x sub 2 we have 5 and for y sub 1 we have negative 5 and for y sub 2 we have negative 1. So let's work on the x coordinate first. So negative 1 plus 5 is equal to 4. So we have 4 over 2. And for the y coordinate, we have negative 5 plus negative 1, which is equal to negative 6. So for y coordinate, we have negative 6 over 2. And we need to simplify them. We have 4 over 2, which is equal to 2 and negative 6 over 2 is equal to negative 3. Therefore, the coordinates of the center is 2 and negative 3. And that's all you need to know about the distance formula. Dear Acute Angels, you did great in watching and listening. I hope you are now confident to answer activities related to it. Again, this is Teacher Anna and see you on another Matinee episode.